So I'm here in the south of Chile to collect Crepi Patella dilatata, Crepi Patella facunda, two really interesting species of marine gastropods. They occur primarily subtidally in Chile, but in some places on low tides you can find them in the intertidal. So we're here in Playa Grande hoping to find some Crepi Patellas here on the rocks. That is, if the tide goes out a little more. Right now we're in a, the upper intertidal zone where there's a lot of mussels and then you can see a lot of macroalgae. The Crepi Patellas prefer to be um, away from the macroalgae. So we'll see if we have any luck. The beach drift here in Chile is really rich with kelps, large macroalgae, and the occasional crab or seashell. Now here you can see this one appears to be a brachiopod shell that's washed up from the subtitle. And right next to it is exactly what we're looking for, a crepi patella probably fecunda, it's hard to tell. Um, this one's obviously very old and beach washed. So here we are on the south coast of Chile looking for crepidulas. We don't expect to see any because it's a little high in the intertidal, but I think my friends might have found one. Um, I think this is a fonari, I'm not sure. But the, that, that animal is clean, you know, all and don't allow the mighty little species to colonize. Very interesting. Well, we can see very easily if it's a siphon area, maybe yeah. by pulling it off the rock. <laughs> now you can tell if it's a siphon area by the kind of face that it has. And that looks like... Oops, I can't actually see. Yep, that's definitely... It's a siphon area, no? A siphon area. Yeah. It has very... It doesn't have long skinny tentacles like most snails. It has kind of a flat face. So we'll put him back where he belongs. Here we go. Estamos listos? Sí, todos listos. Bye. ¿Y a dónde vas? A Calfuco. ¿Por qué? A buscar las crepes. <risa> <risa> so, finally, we've arrived at the Calfuco Marine Station of the Universidad Austral de, de Chile. And we're here to pick up two species of crepidulas that we've been that I've been waiting for all week, and now we're gonna go inside. This is just a beautiful station with natural lighting, an amazing view of the ocean, fantastic supply of running seawater, and really good laboratories running along the inside of the lab. This is a real marine laboratory with running seawater inside. Here you can see some of the local animals. This part of the world has amazing starfish, all sorts of different species, quite large. Let me put my hand for scale. And here you can see the mussels that they've been eating. And also, sadly, the shells of some crepidulas. Crepi patellas. We have cholga shells. Cholgas are kind of mussel. And 
the Crepe Patella Dilatata. We're trying to collect legs to live on shoulders, and here you can see they've climbed off of the shells and are now sitting at the water's edge at the top of the aquarium. All these females, this is Dilatata females and Fecunda females. Yeah, they look just like bumps on a rock, but they're really fascinating animals. Oh, this looks like a good one. There we go. So here we are in Valdivia at the airport and we have the precious Crepidulus, land cargo, sent by David Bayless from Coquimbo yesterday and hopefully they're still packed in ice and happy to be here in Valdivia with us. Now we're back to the lab to see how the animals look. Here we are in Oscar's lab with the Crepidulus that we got yesterday. Here's Crepidula crepi patella fecunda, a large round species with planktotrophic development. This one's not brooding. And here they are more on their natural substrate. Then we have Crepidula dilatata. They look really a lot the same, almost indistinguishable even to experts, but they tend to be smaller. And this species has direct development with nurse eggs. And then finally, we have a currently undescribed species of Crepe Patella that was flown in yesterday from Coquimbo, from the north of Chile. And these also look very similar. They're flatter because they've been growing on really flat rocks. But uh, they, let me see, they look the same. There he is, that one doesn't look so good. And we're packing them up to fly with me back to Panama this afternoon. Okay. Let's see. Here I'm putting some moist, uh, I don't know, padding on them. It's important to keep them moist, but to not have them drowning in seawater because the oxygen might be a little ice with them to keep them cool. Here, the Crepidulas are in the house of my colleague David Bayles, who's repacking them with ice for the <laughs> <laughs> with ice for the trip back home to Panama. My flight's leaving at 3 a.m., so I'm getting ready for the airport now at midnight. Okay, so here I am, three o'clock in the morning in the Santiago airport, getting ready to get on the plane to head back to Panama. We should arrive back in Panama at eight o'clock in the morning, just in time to get the animals to the lab at the start of the day. So these Propidula are one of the, probably the most well-documented snails to travel in the Americas recently. We have the import permit for, the, for Panama, a letter from the Universidad Austral talking about the collaboration that I have with Oscar, Send a pesca paperwork regarding the exportation of the animals. Meter paperwork from Panama regarding the quarantine and health of the animals. And I think that's it. So we should be good to go. And once my flight leaves here, Santiago, 3 o'clock in the morning, I should be back in Panama at 8, ready to go straight to the lab, drop off the animals, 
and hopefully they'll be okay and settle into their new home in a matter of hours. To keep the animals cool during the trip, I'm transporting them in a soft-sided beer cooler. Complete with let's see, ice packs, little frozen ice cubes, and here's the animals with the oops, here's the animals with their Cerner Pesca tape certifying that they're approved to be exported. They're taped shut until arrival in Panama. And I'm just checking the temperature and they seem pretty cool still. I don't know about this one in the bottom though. Yep, seems pretty cool. So hopefully they're good for another five or six hours. And well, see you in Panama guys. Okay, so I'm back at the Colin lab and I have the snails. And we're gonna open them up. I have some pre-prepared cold, chilled seawater to put them in so they can feel at home. And here's the box, still sealed with the Santa Pesca tape from Chile. And let's see how the animals did. Materials. These ones are the Crepidula dilatata. They look okay. So I'm just going to put them in here. Like so. These ones are the new species from Coquimbo. They look pretty good. These ones are the Pedella fecunda. Here, here you can see the underside of the animal. This is the foot. The head is up there under that air bubble because they've been out of water for a little while. These are large females. They're not brooding. That one's really retracted and it needs some water. It thinks it's low tide. Okay, here we go. Brilliant. Here they go in our brand new incubator. Just for them.